Almost uh, 50 years ago to the day, Senator Robert Kennedy reminded the people of Indianapolis that even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until in our despair against our will comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. Words of pain spoken in a city words I echo here today. At approximately 2 a.m. this morning, a beautiful one-year-old girl was murdered in our city. She loved and was loved. She laughed and the wor world smiled. She lived and she made life worth living. A one-year-old cannot stand on her own, much less defend herself. A one-year-old cannot form sentences, much less speak out against the mindless menace of gun violence in her community. But we can stand. We can speak. And if we don't, no one will. We can start by speaking to those who were responsible for last night's shooting. Whoever did this will face the full weight of the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department, the Marion County Prosecutor's Office, and each and every one of our law enforcement partners. Whoever did this will be found. Whoever did this will be tried. And sooner or later, they will face the consequences of their actions. But that is not enough. That is not a sufficient answer. If our hope is to truly end the senseless slaughter, if we want to give meaning to the lives of those we've lost, if we pray for peace for just one more month, for just one more week, for just one more day, then we must also be honest with ourselves. I know that our country is mourning and awakening in the aftermath of horrifying acts of gun violence. But despite the disagreement that rage over those policies, there is not one doubt in my mind that the people of Indianapolis are united as one city with one voice in condemning illegal gun violence. And today, right here in Indianapolis, we are confronted with the worst form of such gun violence. An innocent child was robbed of her dreams and a city is robbed of its future. I do not fear the person. I do not fear the people who committed this act. I learned long ago that there will always be evil in this world. It's not the actions of evil men that I fear the most. It is the silence the apathy, the inaction of good men and good women that I fear the most. The reality is this, and we must come to terms with it. Too many young people in our community illegally possess firearms. We know it. Mothers and fathers know it. Brothers and sisters know it. Friends and neighbors know it, but a deafening silence persists. And as long as it does, the young person carrying the firearm, our entire community, and every child in it remain at risk. We must make it clear that we do not solve our differences in Indianapolis with guns. We must have the courage to speak to each other, 
to a pastor, to a police officer. We must have the conviction to come together and unite for peace rather than allow a deaf ear to be turned toward the cries of our neighbors. We must do these things. If not for ourselves, then we must do them for the city that we love. If not for our city, then for the neighborhoods we call home. If not for our neighborhoods, we must do this for our families whom we cherish. And if not for all of that, we must do it for a beautiful one-year-old baby girl. For her. I thank you. Chief. Thank you, Mayor, and I, I can't add anything that uh, describes the severity of why we're here, and, and we've been here all too often. But uh, what I wanted to do is give you an idea of what we have uh, up until this time uh, and, and make sure that you know that this is still preliminary. We continue to make this uh, uh, do interviews, look at evidence, and our investigators are working hard. But I wanted to walk through this and maybe give you a time stamp if that might be helpful. Um, at 0144 hours, officers received a run of a person shot at 3527 Whitfield Street. Officers arrived and located two people shot, one adult female and one-year-old child. At 0154 hours, the adult female was transported to Eskenazi in stable condition with a gunshot wound to her shoulder. The one-year-old child was transported to Riley in critical condition at that time. Detectives and uniform officers secured the scene, separated witness, took statements, continued to take statements from these witnesses to try and understand what occurred. At 0228 hours, we're told that the adult female is in good condition. At 0229 hours, one minute later, one-year-old Malaysia Robeson was pronounced deceased. Detectives have learned through witnesses' interviews that this incident may be part of an ongoing dispute between people who have a relationship with one another. It's not a random act of violence, and it appears to be very targeted, not necessarily to the one-year-old girl. The alleged dispute started on social media and escalated to a large fight at an east side complex earlier in the night. The reason for the dispute in the fight and those all involved is still under investigation. After the fight, the persons involved continued their dispute over the phone and over social media. The dispute culminated this morning at 3527 Whitfield when a suspect exited a car and fired multiple rounds into the house. The home was occupied by nine people, including the one-year-old child and another four-month-old child who was not injured. Detectives have several leads and are still actively looking for potential evidence which may link a person or persons to this crime, and we're very confident that we'll bring the person to justice. Um, I'd like to say I, I appreciate all of you here and the concern that you have. I appreciate even more the people that are here standing next to us and behind us. Um, I would ask that these are people that are doing a lot of good things here in this community a lot of people that are concerned. I would ask that when we are done, that you individually talk to them and their organizations uh, and get an understanding of the good people that are here in this neighborhood and are doing good things and the care and concern that they have. And in the end, I think what that will do, it'll, it will give you hope because as I have those discussions with them, it, uh, it gives me hope. Um, and then if you will share that message, uh, it will give others hope in a, in a very difficult situation. One of those uh, persons who's actively engaged here on, on uh, the east side is Anthony Beverly, and, and he's doing uh, some of the work that's occurring here, and we'd like to give him an opportunity just to talk about that a little bit. Anthony? Thank you, Chief. Like I said, my name is Anthony Beverly. I'm with Stop the Violence in Indianapolis. Also working with the Community Resource Development Council that we started a few months back. And we have a desire to work with people in the community to reduce this violence. I want you to stop and think. 
for just a second here. A one year old baby. A one year old child. Think about that. A defenseless one year old child has lost a life to senseless gun violence. Senseless urban gun violence must stop. As the mayor said earlier, too many people in the urban area are living off of street codes that have no value to our community. And I know that's easy said, easier said than done, to step up. But we have to take action. So with that, several community organizations have already assembled. We've been meeting, working with other groups throughout the city to put together proposed citywide violence reduction plan that is proven across other uh, cities across the country. But none of this will work without you. It will not work without you standing up and taking your rightful place in this entire plan. We, lead, we need mentors and life coaches. They're needed. Men, women, step up. Elders, step up. We cannot do it without you. In my experience, even the hardest criminal, even the hardest shooter, is looking for somebody to speak life into them. They're looking for somebody to speak life into them. Step up and let's do that. So I challenge each of us to take our rightful place, consider what you can do, and do it. Thank you. Again, thank you. This will conclude our press statement today. The mandate has been set to our community. It's so very important that we stand united. I want to thank each and every individual and organization who stands with us. But more importantly, our mayor has already stated we are one city united. Let's unite around the death of a one-year-old. Let's begin to step up to the plate because the greater crime, as the mayor has already mentioned, would be that of apathy and silence. If you know anything, speak. If you can do anything, act. Thank you.